Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. Welcome back to part two of the clutch lines and wiring series. Um, in this video, we're gonna be probably mostly talking about wiring. So I've drawn out the two clutch switch designs that you're gonna find. This, let's start with the old style design. This is the one I'm gonna be using because this is, this is what I found when I went to the junkyard. This was the whole clutch assembly um, that I pulled out of the car. And it just depends on whichever assembly you have. You know, I, I recommend if you, if you can't do the junkyard thing, go, you know, buy it off of eBay, but just buy the whole pedal assembly. You know, you have to have a new brake pedal, you have to have a new clutch pedal. You don't need a new bracket because you already have an old bracket, but since you're buying all that stuff, you might as well just buy the whole assembly. You can find those on eBay and just roll with what, whichever design you get. I got the old design, so that's the one I'm going with. But you'll see that the wiring is basically identical and I'll explain how it's different. But let's, let's start with the old one. On the old one, you have two clutch switches. One's always going to be closed when the clutch pedal's up, and then it'll open when you push the clutch, uh, the clutch pedal down. This one down at the bottom will close when the clutch pedal is down. And just two separate switches, they're gonna be connected to two separate modules in the car, two separate computers in the car. They are three wire clutch switches. The one on the top actually has a blue connector. The one on the bottom has a red connector. That's how you distinguish them. It's just easier to remember that way. Uh, but they're both identical switches. And one thing I wanna explain is that I've drawn the wires with black and red here. They're not actually bla black and red. They're gonna be brown and purple. Uh, but you know, the signal wire is gonna be actually, is gonna be blue. So the, the black wire or the brown wire is the ground wire. The, and that's gonna be pin number one on, on all the switches. The harnesses actually have numbers. So you know, all, all the harnesses and all the computers and all the, the ones we're gonna be dealing with, they're all numbered. So you'll be able to find which pin that I'm talking about in all cases. But pin number one is gonna be the ground wire, that's brown. Pin number two is going to be the signal wire. Uh, which in this case is gonna go to the EWS module on pin number eight. The EWS module is located up to the left side of the clutch pedal. You'll see it, it's just, it's a little white module. It's really easy to see. Pin number three is gonna be the 12 volt wire. And over here again, we have pin one and three. Those are also ground in 12 volt wires. The signal wire for that switch is gonna, is gonna run up to the DME, which is the engine computer, which, is, which lives inside the engine compartment up on, in the electrical box. So this wire is gonna run to the DME, the engine computer on pin 23. Now, we have to actually run powers and grounds to both of these switches in order for them to operate. And where you get your powers and grounds from are the brake switch harness, which is already gonna be pre-installed in your, in your vehicle because whether it's automatic or manual, you have a brake pedal and you need a brake switch. So this harness is already there. It's already got 12 volts and ground that we can steal from. So I'm gonna be running these two 12 volt wires into the 12 volt wire on the brake switch harness, which is the number one wire, the pin number one wire. They're all the same color, they're both purple. So you just, all you gotta do is connect the purples and tap them into the purple wire. Um, I'm gonna be using a quick tap in, the, in this installation. I can get away with that here in Southern California. It's probably not the most professional thing to do. It would be better to solder the wires, to, to cut these wires and solder them all together and use some heat shrink. Um, or you can also use those little butt connectors that actually have the heat shrink on them when you heat shrink them down. They've got the little sealant inside, they seal down over the wires. Those two ways are actually the professional way to do it. I can get away with quick taps here in California because it might as well be outer space. I mean, things we just don't have problems with green crusties here in California, so it's really not an issue. And this is inside the car too, so it's just, it's not a big, big deal. So, um, as you can see, we're gonna run the 12 volt wires to there. You know, you just run the two wires together and tap them in. And then we're gonna run the two ground wires to the, uh, the, the brown and white, or the brown wire on the brake switch harness, which is gonna be pin two. And that's how we get our powers and grounds for that switch. The actual signal wires will run up to the modules and that's how you do the wiring. The new style is going to be a little different in that it doesn't have those two individual three wire clutch switches. It just has one four wire clutch switch. Pin number one is gonna be the ground. Pin number three is gonna be the 12 volt. You run those over to the brake switch harness in exactly the same way. The only difference is that you don't have two wires. You only have one wire because you only have one switch. This one has the two signal wires combined into it. Pin, uh, pin two is actually gonna run up to the DME on pin 23. And pin number four on this clutch switch module is gonna run up to the EWS on pin eight. So it's ex you, you can see how the wiring is exactly the same. The only difference is we have one power and one ground over here. 
two powers and two grounds over here that just get connected together and wired into the same exact place. This is what the Quick Connect looks like. You can see how it has a little channel in there. So all you do is you actually split the wire. You just need to split the uh, insulation of the wire. So let's say we've got our wire here and we've got our, our insulation over it, okay? Insulation over it on that side. You just use your wire strippers to just clamp down on the wire to make a little split in the insulation, just exposing a little bit of the wire. You don't wanna pull it back and expose like an inch of it. You don't need to do that. You just need to split enough of it to actually go down over that channel. You see how wide that channel is? And what I do, and what, what I'm gonna show you in a second in the footage that you're gonna see in a second is, I just use the wire strippers to split the wire, spread it apart, and then I push the wire down over here. I use a little uh, flathead screwdriver to just push the wire down onto this little connector to make sure that it makes good connection with that little V thing. And then all you do is snap this down over. I do put a little bit of dielectric grease in there just to create some kind of an environment seal. This is the little crimp splice connector that, go, you know, two of the wires go in this end. You crimp it down. I also put a little bit of dielectric grease in that end to protect it. And then you just push this connector on to the quick tap right there. And that's how it works. Now, one thing you need to be careful of, at least with these cheap ones, is you can see how there's uh, quite a bit of space on the top there. One mistake I made when I was put, when I was installing these, I didn't notice it, is that I pushed the spade terminal. Hope you can see, I did that. And the spade terminal didn't go in and didn't connect. So I caught that, I fixed it. You just have to be cautious when you're connecting them together. But that's what I'm using, using those because I can get away with it. Um, if you are in an inter and if you are in an environment where you can't get away with it, then probably your best bet is to just cut the wires and solder them all together and put some heat shrink over them. So I lost a little bit of audio here, and I was basically demonstrating how to do the wiring on this brake switch, which I cut out of the car that I took this whole pedal assembly from. So what I did was I just used the wire strippers to cut a hole in the insulation and I'm putting some dielectric grease on the quick connect. And then I'm just pushing the wire down over the quick connect, those little, the little V jaws in the, in the quick connect. And I'm gonna use my little flathead screwdriver to sort of push the wire down into that channel to make sure that it's making real good contact. And then you just snap the little clamshell over and you're done there. So wherever we were, where were we? I don't know, let's pick a place. Okay, perfect. So now we'll get another little lock. Put some dielectric grease in there. Tell you, this is gonna be a whole lot of fun inside the car. <laughs> this is why I took the seat out. All right, just a little more grease. Make sure we're, we got enough. So that's how we're gonna tap into our power and our ground on the brake switch. So now let me show you what we're gonna do with these wires. So the purples with the stripes, in this case, this one's a yellow stripe, and that one's a white stripe, doesn't matter. We're just gonna sort of wire them together. Make them the same length, just about. Okay, now we're gonna strip those. Twist those together. Let's see if they fit in one of these. Yeah, looks like they do. They fit pretty great. Test them out, make sure they won't come out. And uh, we could have put some dielectric grease in there as well, just to protect things. So there you go. Now we've tapped into the hot wire right there. And now we're just gonna do the same for the two brown wires, which are our negatives.
Okay, so let's put a little dielectric grease on this one ahead of time. Twist it together. Okay, give it a test, make sure it's tight. Cool. So that's how we're gonna do our ground wires. And that's it. That's what it's gonna look like up in the car right there. You know, that'll be our, our brake switch. And I think I will put some, uh, some little cloth tape around these just to kind of keep them neat. So this is the cloth tape that BMW uses in their wiring harnesses. It's called Tessa, T-E-S-A. I got it off Amazon. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of wire these together because I'm gonna put them basically in the same place. So I'll just, you know, put a little cloth tape around those just to kind of keep them neat. Now we got enough to disconnect this switch if we need to. So now we've just got our two signal wires that we need to wire up into the car. Now, <clears throat> um, I did buy some connectors and even a crimping tool from my electronics store. This is the crimping tool for these little connectors. And I bought these little connectors. They're little Molex, Molex connectors. And these were 2.54 millimeters, P50. I don't know if that is really anything, but they're basically these little connectors here. Hopefully we can see that, see what they look like. And I think they're actually going to fit into the little harnesses, but the BMW connectors actually do look different. I went ahead and I went to the junkyard and I pulled one of the, one of the little wiring looms. So hopefully you can see that it basically has four sides and it's got a little hole in the middle, whereas this has a little thing that gets pressed it gets pressed to the side. So that this thing might actually bend the pin a little bit where it's connecting in. So I've decided that I don't want to use these. Um, it was just kind of easier to go to the junkyard and get one of these harnesses from a car. Um, and uh, yeah, so I kind of recommend you do that too, particularly if you're pulling all your parts from a junkyard or whatever, which is the cheapest way. That's, uh, that's kind of what I would recommend. Let me show you how you get one of these loose from the little connector. All you do is you press down with a pin on that little metal thing there, pin or a needle or whatever, and then you do it again, and that's how you get them out. So I got a little wiring harness here with all kinds of different wires, and I do seem to have a blue and black one, which is gonna correspond to our, well, it's gonna be close enough, here, blue and black right here. Um, Again, the, uh, the EWS for me is this blue and black, so that kind of makes sense, kind of seems perfect. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be long enough to go over this way and go into the EWS connector. I'm, uh, I, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and take this, put it in the car, do a little test fit and see if it, uh, see if it fits, see if it's long enough. Okay, so it is not gonna be long. I mean, it might be, it might be, but it's gonna be pretty tight. So I think I wanna give myself some extra room here. And to do that, I'm just gonna solder in a little piece of black wire. I've got 22 gauge stranded wire here. So I'll just use this and I'll just kind of make a little, make a little extra length. So I'm gonna use my little butane soldering iron here. It's getting hot right now. I've just got a little piece of black wire. Hopefully that along with that length should be long enough. I think it will be. So let's just strip our wires here. Get the two wires in my little helping hands here. Okay, tin my tip here. And then you wanna heat up the wire from underneath so that the solder gets sucked up into the wire. Very good. Now we'll get a piece of heat shrink. All I could find was my barbecue lighter, but that should work for now. 
Okay. So now we have a little extra length of wire. So now I'll just wire it up to uh, the EWS one, which again is gonna be the red connector. Let's remember to slip a piece of heat shrink on beforehand. Too bad this is not magnetic, so we'll just have to leave it hanging up in the air there. Wait for it to cool for just a slight second. That way your heat shrink doesn't melt when you're getting it over top. Cool, so that's it. Now I don't know how long I need to make this wire that runs all the way up to the, uh, into the cabin. Um, and I also think it might be easier to push the wire down through from the cabin. So I think I'm probably gonna have to just, you know, solder this up, um, up inside the, the car there once the pedals are all installed. So that'll be a little difficult. I won't be able to show it, but you guys see the procedure. So um, I'll show, you know, everything but that. But yeah, we should be uh, ready to go and reinstall this into the car. And then I'll just need to do this wiring on the existing harness that's in there. And just in case I didn't mention it before, if you don't wire this up like this, if you don't do this wiring at all, your car won't start. So you have to do this. We're gonna run some wire up into the box um, from the cabin. There's actually a little pass through uh, where air can actually pass through. So um, let, me, let me go handheld and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, for the DME wire, I'm gonna run it up from the cabin. You see that light there? That is just a little pass through area. It's like for fresh air to breathe. So we're gonna run the wire from up, up from inside the cabin into the electrical box right here. And also, if we can look back here, see if we can see there's a little grommet right there. That is where we're gonna run the clutch, uh, the clutch fluid line through. So I'm gonna reach up from inside the cabin and I'll push that grommet out. And here you can see that I'm soldering the wire that I pushed up through from the cabin to an end that I got from that junkyard wiring harness. And here you can see where I pushed that black stranded wire up through from the cabin. And finally, I'm just putting some heat shrink on and shrinking it down. So our wire is actually gonna go to pin 23 on the DME connector. Uh, it's, not, it's gonna be on this connector right here. So it's the one with the little push lock. And I do believe, or the little flip lock, I do believe we have to get the coil wire off first. so that the little flip lock can go all the way down, yeah. So this is the connector and we are going to slip out the one that has pin 23 on it. So it's pin one here, you know, one through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, 31 through 40, they're all numbered. So we just need to get pin 23, so 21, 22, 23. It's gonna be that one right there. So the third one on that side, and we can almost, can almost see it, but not quite. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove it from this little tab. So there's just a little, little thing that you push to the side and that should push the, allow the connector to come out of this little holder. Like that. And this one's labeled as well. So we're just gonna go to that one right there. We've got a little push connector. It's gonna go that way. And then it just goes in and we're on pin 23. Now we'll slide this back in, making sure that we got the 21 aligned with where the 21 was. And that's it. We just put our connector back on. And we're done. We'll go, we'll slip the rest of the wire down into the cabin and then we'll wire it up to the clutch switch. And that's gonna be it for our clutch switch wiring. So remember that grommet I talked about that I was gonna push out from the inside? It's gonna be through these two cutouts here and you just push the grommet. And 
just basically drops. So that's where our clutch line is going to push through. We're going to need to remove some of the brake fluid um, because here's the little nipple on the side where the clutch line is going to attach to, and we're going to cut the tip of it off. And if we don't remove the fluid, it's all going to leak out and eat into the paint and stuff. So um, you could do this with a turkey baster. Just go to the 99 cent store and get a turkey baster. I actually have this little vacuum bleeder tool right here. And if you just, I can take the tip off of it. This is, uh, I got this at Harbor Freight and it's really, really great. You use it with compressed air and it just sucks stuff. It sucks all fluids. Okay, I got it down below the clutch line. So now I'm confident I can just cut the tip off and uh, nothing's gonna leak out. So here you can see where the level of the fluid is. You can see if I shake it, you can see where the line is down there in the bottom. So that's below where that little nipple is right there. So we should be good. So you can see that this is the part where the line's gonna slip over. So we don't wanna cut that off. We wanna cut it off probably right about there. So I'm gonna use my tin snips for this. They're nice and powerful. Yeah, looks like we got the line open. Yeah, good enough. So this should be quite the little juggling act because I need to get the bracket and everything up into place. I need to run the line through this hole here and up into the cabin. And I also need to connect the clutch line to the master cylinder and then connect the brake booster to the brake pedal. So this should be, this should be interesting. Need to go up on there. Okay. Brake pedal on. I don't know if that clutch line is in there. Oh, I think it is now. No, now it is. <laughs> okay. Ah, we're there. We're there, there, and we're there, there. Okay, we are all in. So let's connect up this little brake switch. Let's see, which way does it go? Let's see, we got our EWS wires over here. This is going to be our, or I'm sorry, this is the DME wire. This is the EWS wire, which is that little white box up in the corner. So we'll go and connect that. And then this wire here, I'm going to have to solder to the EWS. And that, that's probably going to be tricky with it plugged in up there. Let me get it down a little further. Yeah, okay. It'll be a lot easier to work with here. And so I can just solder these two wires together here and uh, yeah, finish up everything. First, let's bolt everything up into place. And let's not forget to put that little clip on the brake pedal. Okay, so I've got the DME wire soldered up. So let's reconnect that switch up here. Very good. So that can just run sort of over here. We'll tuck it over here. I'll probably put a zip tie around here. Um, so now we just have this, uh, this EWS wire, which we got to plug into pin eight on that harness. And then of course, let's just get our powers and grounds. We can connect those right now. There we go. So those wires are all connected. Now we'll just pull out this EWS connector. Ooh, this one's gonna be challenging because there's not a lot of length on it. Probably gonna have to get the camera out of the way because I need to get my head down in there. So it turns out pin number eight is the one that's closest to you on the top of the connector. You have to remove it from the little outside connector just like for the DME one, and uh, you'll see it, it's actually numbered eight. 
So got that all connected, got everything wired back up. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of Tessa tape on these wires right here. Turns out I didn't need that extra length in that EWS wire. It would have been best if I just wired those two small halves together, but no big deal. Um, I'll just put a little bit of Tessa tape around everything, just make everything look nice and neat. And that'll be it for in here. So let's get this reinstalled while we're in here. So we just got to get these screws put back in. I'm going to wait before putting that little uh, splash panel back in. Number one, because I have to cut a hole in it for the clutch line. Number two, I just want to make sure there's nothing leaking here once I get all the clutch fluid in. Now let's connect the little clutch line to the clutch. To the uh, brake master cylinder or brake reservoir that's what it is it's a brake reservoir and no we don't need to put any kind of clamp on that because there's no pressure up in here all the pressure is down past the master cylinder in the lines that are coming out of the master cylinder this is just a gravity feed system so that was really difficult to get on there that ain't gonna rattle off or anything so no clamps needed nor did i find a clamp on this when i took it off the car i took it off of so guys, this is actually the reversing light relay and we need to actually tap into the brown and black wire underneath there. You see how I've put a little, one of those little quick taps in there and I've just run one of my reversing light wires to it and the other reversing light wire, I'm, I've actually wired to ground. Let me show you where. So up here, I've created a little, uh, a little eyelet and then I just kind of grounded it on this little tab right here on the body. You can ground it anywhere. You don't have to run a wire all the way up to here if you don't have the harness for the reversing lights, you know, like the original harness and you're just sort of uh, making it up as you go along. You can find any ground anywhere, you know, whatever length of wire you want to run. But the other wire has to come up and come under here and wire into this relay down here. And I sort of, uh, <laughs> I, I already pulled this relay up. It was, it was broken off, first of all. And then as I, was, as I was trying to pull this box up, I kind of broke off the little corner of it, which sits down in here like that. So this is kind of how my box was supposed to sit. Let me get it back in here. So it was supposed to sit like that. And that's kind of where it was. So yeah, unfortunately mine broke off. This plastic is really brittle. So I'm gonna have to um, keep my eye out for a replacement for that. But that's basically how it would sit down like that. And I believe to get it out, all you gotta do is you just gotta pull out this, this little tab right here with a, um, a screwdriver and that should actually pop out of the little bracket. But uh, hopefully yours isn't as brittle as mine. Anyway, that's where you need to tap. You need to tap the uh, brown and black wire and then you need to ground the other wire on your switch. So that is it. We are all done. All the preparation's done. The wiring's done. We've got our clutch in. We've got our clutch lines up and just everything's ready to go. Carpet's cleaned. Um, I think I will do a separate video if you haven't seen it already on uh, changing the seat cushion because I actually have some seat cushions that I got from a junkyard a while ago that are really nice. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'll do that in a separate video now that the seat's out, might as well. Um, I think I'm also going to do a separate video on changing out all the shift bushings because I bought all the shift bushings to kind of restore the shifter to its factory original feel. And uh, so, yeah, that'll be a separate video. And then we'll just get back to uh, in the next video. I'll just, you know, install the new transmission and get going. So uh, and then, you know, after that, we'll do like a coding video. So anyway, stay tuned, guys. There's still more to come. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.